see it. Como News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is our auto expert. Here's Nick Miles. We have transported by the magic of radio to South Carolina, where I am actually sitting on the beach, being a part of the launch of the Infiniti QX80. I have driven the car. I have heard all about the car today. And now we're going to investigate a little more with the guys that are actually bringing the QX80 to market. Bob Welby is with me. You are. It's it's hard to say what you do because your title has so many different <laughs> portions to it, but you're really responsible for things like pricing and getting this vehicle to market in the way that the American consumers would like. What part did you have in bringing the brand new 2018 QX80 to market? Well, I'm just one member of a really large team of great people that are bringing uh, this model year 18 QX80 to market. We focus specifically on all the launch activities, the model strategy, the, the mix strategy, color strategy, and pricing strategy. It's all the behind the scenes that really just bring the vehicle to market for our consumers, uh, and hopefully it just continues to be as popular as, as it has been. Let's talk about the vehicle. Position it for our listeners who may not uh, understand what it is and how it works. It's the largest Infinity in your lineup. Some see it as as the flagship, uh, although I'm sure that you guys probably feel the flagship is more uh, your maybe Q60 or uh, one of your you know sportier vehicles. But it, it's probably the vehicle that most people recognize because it's just this absolutely huge family hauler, right? <laughs> it is. It's, it's it's our largest vehicle. The QX80 is our largest vehicle in the lineup, and it really offers the best of everything that we have in terms of interior amenities uh, and comfort and luxury for our consumers. Big and powerful engine, a V8 engine, 400 horsepower, uh, 8,500 pounds of towing capacity. So this is a very commanding vehicle, a very capable vehicle that we have in our lineup. So let's talk about some of the things that you decided. How did you decide the color palette for the United States? Um, presumably it's different for the U.S. It is for other countries. What did you decide on and why? So, well, I think we like to have a variety, variety for our customers, right? So you have a lot of your core vehicle colors. I mean, your solid blacks and your whites there. We've also brought a nice variety of metallics and really higher quality paints. We have a new champagne quartz this year. It's a beautiful, like, slight beige color that's got a gray flake in it. You also uh, introduced some new colors on the inside. Yeah, so on the inside, we have a nice saddle brown interior that really works well with the quilting pattern in there, and it meshes well with the variety of the colors that are in our palette there. Now, now quilting has always been something that people did on like, super high-end, expensive luxury cars, mm-hmm. Rolls Royces, Bentleys, mm-hmm. uh, but you've put it in the QX80. Is, is that a step to bring this vehicle's interior closer to the market of the entrepreneurial, the you know, the business maker. Yeah, well, it's given our customers a luxury that we think they deserve when they when they buy the Infinity, right? So it's really bringing that to them. It is that high and that high end uh, and that nice feel, but uh, it's our customers deserve that. Now, and we'll talk later with the rest of the team. But you guys have done some other very cool stuff on the inside. A challenge for you is to price this. Mm-hmm. Now everybody always thinks cars are always too expensive, but ultimately you have to manufacture it, you have to make it, you have to market it, you have to do all these things. So you started off around sixty five thousand dollars we look watch really closely the market watch the competitive landscape and we listen to consumers we listen to what they value most in the car and we do our best to really fight that balance of bringing a competitive offering to the marketplace um, that's really get the value for the customers really looking at that value piece of it as well there's a significant investment in this segment and that's where it becomes really important right the features that are in the car even at a base level at that sixty five thousand that you talked about around that starting price having a really good set of quality base amenities quality navigation system quality or interior appointments um, are all important um, starting there and then continuing to walk up as you as you get into more technologies up around the grade walk. Which, which then brings in another question mm-hmm. to me. When I go into the dealership and I want to buy my QX80, sure. I'm, I'm looking through the dealership and, and I, I get presented with this form and I can tick boxes on this form. I can add things. Sure. I can I can choose a different trim level. I mm-hmm. can, you know, this is really to help me when I'm buying this vehicle. How, how does that work? Uh, how do you decide what to put in a package? So if I click box number one, I get all-wheel drive, I get backup camera, whatever it might be. How does that work? Yeah. Well, again, it starts with our consumers, like really trying to package together the features that are most popular for consumers and that are the most logical. Um, first in the in the grade walk is a driver assistance package where you'll find a lot of those safety and alert technologies there. Um, so we're grouping them together from a logical perspective, um, also based on what customer past preference has been. Um, so we do that that combination of really keeping those features um, so when the dealers have their variety on our lots, customers have a really good variety of what they can choose from uh, without being too diverse uh, with too much complexity for, for them. We're talking QX80. We're on the beach in South Carolina. When we come back on our auto expert, we're going to discuss a little more about how this vehicle came to market and we'll talk about infinity and the future. Keep listening. Nick Miles, our auto expert, is moments away on Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Have no need to 
Como News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is our auto expert. Here's Nick Miles. Welcome back to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles, and uh, we're talking to Bob Welby. We're talking about the t- 2018 QX80, which is the largest vehicle in the Infinity lineup. I'm on the beach in South Carolina, and we've spent time driving the vehicle. Let's talk a little bit about Infinity's position in the world. Most people may just know you as the luxury of Nissan. You bring all of the the great reliability and the great value for money, but you bring it to a whole different level. But there's a bigger picture here in the world, isn't there? You are part of a much bigger organization, a much bigger strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. Infinity truly is, is the luxury arm of the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance. So we are the, you know, the sole luxury expression of that alliance. It's over 10 million vehicles a year. So it's a massive scale organization. Uh, and that just means how much more of luxury and technology and amenities we can bring to our consumers at scale. How much is give and take? So I know there's some interesting facts and figures about Infinity. 70% of the latest technology in safety and security features were first introduced on Infinity vehicles. It's a, it's a very proud thing, I'm sure, that you guys have. Surround view cameras is, is definitely a very obvious discussion of that. But how much is a give and take coming to and from the rest of the of the alliance? So how much are you, information are you giving to, uh, to Renault, to Nissan, to uh, Mitsubishi? Mitsubishi, and how much do you learn from that alliance? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a healthy balance of both. I mean, you mentioned we are definitely are the beneficiary of a lot of world's first technologies. Uh, and while it's great to have those, it's really about our customers. How do we bring them to our customers better? Um, so we see quite a bit of that. And the scale of the alliance, it allows us to bring some of these things out first in a luxury space and infinity, and then really bring those to more of the mass market vehicles just so a broader swath of the population can, uh, can experience the vehicles. A, lo- a lot of things that you do are very groundbreaking. And one of the groundbreaking things that we were introduced at the LA International Auto Show was this new vehicle, the QX50. Now, the QX50 is a midsize luxury CUV, but there is more than just the latest technology in the dashboard and in the electronics. You guys have actually taken a step forward, whereas most breakthroughs in engines have been electronics over the last five years or so, but it's different with this. You've actually made some mechanical breakthroughs in the new engine of the QX50, and it sounds like we could get into very complicated deep water here, Bob. <laughs> So I just want to remind you that I'm not an engineer and and don't lose me. (laughs) Very good. Well, that's uh, same here. But uh, you're talking about the VC turbo engine, the new variable compression turbo engine that's under the hood in the all new Mondeo 19 QX50. Really what this is going to bring, it's going to bring that combination of power and efficiency to the consumers. It's actually a mechanical engine that can change its compression ratio. And what what that'll mean for most consumers is is you're going to have the power when you need it, but the fuel efficiency that you want, bringing that perfect balance in a seamless way to the customer. So give me an example of how that might happen. I mean, sure. I could be just cruising down the freeway and I stomp on the gas because I need to pass a truck or something like that, and I'm going to see more power than I expected? That's exactly right. The action, the engine is actually going to change its compression ratio in the pistons, and you're going to consume a little more fuel to get that power that you want. And then when you're not using that hard, heavy stomp on the accelerator pedal, the compression ratio is going to change, and you're going to get more fuel efficiency and more of a sipping type of approach to this engine. When you market a vehicle like this, you talk about the fuel economy of it. It. Mm-hmm. It's a big thing. It's definitely one of the five things that pulls people into a dealership when they're buying a new vehicle. So talking about the fuel economy, will that raise the overall fuel economy from the current QX50 to this new one? Yeah, most certainly. I mean, this is an all-new vehicle, all-new engine, all-new platform, uh, and actually that all-new performance features for our consumers. One of those is that fuel economy. Uh, well, there'll be 27 miles per gallon at least uh, on a combined basis with all the horsepower to match. One of the best, if not the best in class. When you develop a vehicle like this, are you developing it uh, as Infinity, or was this again part of the alliance? It was it was a more of a conglomeration of development, or there's still those technical advancements that they made in the in-house in Infinity, or it's it's a group effort, it's a group sharing of information. Well, you see, it's a little bit of both. I mean, this this engine itself has been 20 plus years in the making for the alliance, particularly. So there's been certainly very very good people at Infinity have been working on it for a long time, and there's been solid support from the larger organization, from R&D, from the engineers. So just a, a 
phenomenal organizational effort to bring this one to market. So let's talk about when with this when it will come to market. Of course, I know that the vehicle will be introduced. To, it was introduced to the world at the Los Angeles International Auto Show. It will start to appear probably at regional auto shows throughout the next few months, and then the media will get their first hands, their dirty paws, as I like to say, on it. Come towards the end of January. Uh, when will consumers get to see it, and why should they consider it if they're looking at a mid-size luxury SUV? We expect it to be on sale in the first quarter of next calendar year. That's right. We're excited for you to get your hands on it so you can see it and, uh, and experience everything that we're talking about uh, so that your listeners can uh, can hear more about it from your perspective. But we know that what, what you're going to see and what they're going to experience is a vehicle that not only has that just commanding style and that presence that Infinity is known for, but you're also going to have that performance as well and the capability and the utility that this vehicle is going to offer. Um, we really feel like the customers are going to uh, receive it well and we really feel like that they're going to enjoy this car. There's a lot of competition in that segment, right? So I guess, does it technically fall into the because it's not is it a mid-size because that's more of something like the Durango size it's, it's a little Correct. smaller than that right? yeah this will be considered a compact SUV but really it has that utility of that sort of it is in a very competitive space a lot of offerings there and uh, we're well, so that's my it. next question let's, yeah. let's really talk about that because I mean I was at the LA show mm-hmm. and, and although you were the only luxury I think Volvo may, may be in that luxury mm-hmm. space too but, but you really were the only luxury car company to introduce a vehicle on that but in, in the non-luxury segment there was at least three or four vehicles introduced in that that size. Sure. So we're talking about something that's the same size as a, a family sedan, but now it's sort of an SUV version. Yes. Compact or compact sedan. Mm-hmm. This is popular right now. Is the market going to be suddenly flooded with a whole ton of versions of these vehicles? I would say not. I mean, I think what's where the, cons- the consumers are wanting it, right? So you're seeing a huge growth in the space. There are a lot of offerings on the market, both in the premium space and in the mass market space. But this is what consumers have been asking for. They want the uh, that space and that functionality, driving dynamics of a sedan, but that utility, right? The space, the storage space that accommodates the rest of their life needs, you know, beyond just the commute. And for Infinity specifically, I mean, even with all the offerings that are out there, we really feel like we get that great balance of a commanding style that's really attractive to consumers um, with all the amenities that you want inside. Excellent. Well, Bob, thanks very much for talking to us. Just one last question for you. The pricing of the QX80 and uh, when can anybody pick it up? So on the QX80, pricing is revealed now. Starts at 65000 It's going to be in, in our retailer showrooms uh, at the middle of this month, the middle of December. And then you can get it all the way up to, if you stack it out, maybe 90, eight, mid-80s? You can't get all the way to 90. You can get close to 90, but not all the way up to 90. So you're saying I have to go to an off, off, aftermarket shop to get it up over 90? Uh, we have some options for you if you really want to go that far. <laughs> All right. Well, you may have some dollars coming your way. Uh, Thanks for talking to us. When our auto expert returns, we'll talk to more of the team that brought this to market and find out the dirty, rotten details about the vehicle. What I mean by that is we'll get under the hood. We'll talk a little bit about the engine. We'll talk about some of those things that we've referred to and find out about some cool features on the inside of the 2018 QX80. When our auto expert returns, I'm Nick Miles. And 60% light trucks and SUVs. A big turn for the American public to head towards bigger vehicles in the coming year. Keep listening. Nick Miles, our auto expert, is moments away on Como News 1000, FM 97.7. Homo News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is our auto expert. Here's Nick Miles. Well, welcome back to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles, and we are again on the beach in South Carolina, enjoying the beautiful but cold sunshine and talking about the brand new 2018 QX80, a new vehicle coming to market for Infinity. Not a new vehicle as such to the lineup because it has existed for quite some time, but it has been refreshed for 2018. Exterior, interior, and some of the mechanicals a little bit. Uh, we are talking to Anand Patel. Uh, you are basically the guru of all things uh, on this vehicle as far as explaining to me how they work and why they work and what has changed for 2018. So let's start where everybody's going to see the car for the first time as they roll up to an Infinity dealership. They're going to see this big, huge family transportation vehicle sitting on the front lot. How will they recognize the difference between last year's model and the new 2018? Sure, Nick. The 2018 QX80 is completely 
completely redesigned from the A-pillar forward. You're going to notice new fenders, new hood, new headlights, new bumper, new grille, all redesigned to address a more commanding presence to translate that Infinity design language onto our largest SUV. And the designers have done quite a stunning job. The aesthetics, the proportions match quite well what the vehicle represents in the full-size segment. That's the front end. The wheels are, are also refreshed. The 20-inch wheel has a new design. The 22-inch wheel has a new design as well. And coming around the back, you'll see a new hatch with new tail lamps revised to kind of align with the front end as well. So let's talk about that front end a little bit. You know, you have your LED fog lights. You have, there's definitely an air of modernism at that front as well. Uh, but you raised everything. You raised the lights. You made it a little more boxy. Uh, it was a little, I would say, slopey, more wedgy in, in the previous edition. It was, you know, I hear all these guys like Land Rover and like other car companies saying, you know, Jeep with the Wrangler, we had to make it more aerodynamic. This sounds like it wouldn't be more aerodynamic, right? Yet, yet you decided to go that direction. Yeah, it wasn't about the aero on this vehicle uh, being a full-size SUV, but what we were addressing was based on consumer feedback. The car's been in market for seven years and people love the design, to be honest. Those who purchase it love it. But we did hear a voice that the styling was a little polarizing and it wasn't for everybody. And those who look at the exterior aesthetics uh, may or may not love it. Once you get onto the interior and overcome that styling, it was a no-brainer. The car was comfortable. The styling was really good on the inside. The, dr- the vehicle drove really well. So we went back and looked at an opportunity. And our opportunity was to, one, refresh it with the latest Infinity design language, but also raise the headlights up to make it more aesthetically pleasing, give it a little more chiseled look on the front end, and address some of those polarizing comments we heard with the swoopiness and the curviness, the front and rear. So we, we gave that feedback to the designers, and they did a great job redefining this vehicle for us. It sounds a little bit like you butched up the vehicle. You made it a little more menacing, a little more you know muscular, as it were. The hood was one of the biggest changes of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. You changed the, the some of the length, the angle length. You changed a lot of positioning of stuff. And, and that brings to me this whole thing of oh, crash testing and this sort of thing. But you're talking about a large SUV, you know, a, a full-size or a mid-size SUV. I mean, I'm not sure exactly where it falls, but ultimately that doesn't have a lot of the restrictions of the smaller vehicles, does it? It's got the same safety regulations, you know, we expect to have on every car. The, you're right, the design was is, is now commanding in terms of its presence. The hood, in fact, was the upper end was moved about six inches forward. So the whole front end has grown a little bit. The grille is much more substantial as well, which is, you know, kind of a representation of what that V8 engine is needing underneath the hood, that airflow and the cooling. So um, we think the front end, yeah, it's a little bit uh, bigger, larger, but we think it quite well, you know, lines with the Infinity design language. So when we come back on our Auto Expert, I want to talk to you a little bit about the engine and then we'll get into the interior because the tech and the interior is some of the most impressive I've seen in the industry. But the engine at the same time is a powerful V8 when a lot of the competition is going to V6s. We'll talk about why the V8 was chosen by the Infinity team as our Auto Expert returns. I'm Nick Miles. Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Our Auto Expert with Nick Miles will be right back. Como News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is Our Auto Expert. Here's Nick Miles. Welcome back to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. You can find everything you need to about the show at OurAutoExpert.com 24-7, including our radio and TV segments online. We're in South Carolina. We're on the beach. We're enjoying the sunshine. And we've been driving the 2018 Infiniti QX80. It is the largest Infiniti in the lineup, and it has been refreshed for 2018 quite dramatically. Now, Anand Patel is with us. Anand, one of the things that I always feel and is, I guess, poo-pooed, object by a lot of the other uh, media is when you do a refresh I always feel it's the best time for a vehicle because you get the kinks out that were made in the original redesign and once you actually get the refresh which is usually two years in two three years into a, a vehicle's life you get all the things that weren't quite right did you get everything right this time on the QX80? Yeah we talked about uh, the styling at the beginning and the styling has evolved quite well as far as powertrain goes we launched with a V8 400 horse power, 413 pound-feet of torque, and we found uh, that that powertrain has been quite adequate for our customer base. 8,500 pounds towing capacity, so if you're towing a boat or something else, a trailer, there's ample power to uh, to take those uh, trailers and, and boats. So 8,500 pounds of towing, right? Correct. And that that's quite a bit. I mean, I look at some of the competition that may only be able to do 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Household incomes are much 
higher, they might have a larger boat, or they're trailering something out into a camping site. We just wanted to give them the ability to take anything they need wherever they need to go. Let's talk about why you chose a V8. I mean, I look at competition and everybody's V6ing it, a Ford, a V6ing everything with EcoBoost, you know, they're saying we don't need V8. But there, there is something to be said when you, when you leave the V8, you kind of lose something in the V6. It might have the same power, it might have all the same numbers, but there's something about that raw American muscle that kind of evaporates when you go to a V6. And you still chose to stay with a V8. The V8 is is uh, just the ubiquitous engine that people want or expect in, in uh, their full-size SUVs. We see it in the, the trucks as well. We still carry a V8 because it provides the power, it provides the torque that they need. Uh, with a V6, I think we do see competitors going that route with twin turbos and whatnot. I mean, they may be looking for some fuel economy savings there. Uh, but we feel comfortable. We like our V8. It's a, it's a well-proven power plant for our QX80, and it delivers. Let's talk a little bit about the suspension, because, you know, when we talk about powertrain, it's, uh, we talk about mechanicals, it, it only, the engine is only the front bit. There is lots of stuff underneath, the transmission. The, one of the things that was not the way I think that may, most people wanted it in the original QX80, on the last version of the QX80, it was a little soft, a little spongy on the corners, and I think you recognize that, didn't you? Yeah, we have two different suspension systems in our vehicle. Uh, in fact, the base vehicle or the entry vehicle has a 20-inch wheel and a conventional suspension setup. And when you get to the upper end of our grade walk, the hydraulic body motion control system prevents body roll and lean when you're cornering. It also makes the ride more comfortable. Even on rough surfaces, it'll absorb some of those bumps and dips, keeping the body stable while the suspension is doing all the work to allow for a comfortable ride. So give me an example. I'm cornering. I'm doing, you know, 45 miles an hour. On a, on a corner. How does this system respond? The system is monitoring and transferring hydraulic fluid. For example, if you're making a right turn, the hydraulic fluid will transfer to the left side of the, the body to, into a reservoir, and it will stiffen up the outside suspension to help you have a flat, smooth turn. And so you don't feel as much as that seasick feeling as you go Exactly. Around. Which is one of the things that I think the vehicle probably could have done with, with ironing out, and you, and you seem to have done that. Uh, and, and at the same time, too, the underneath all the underpinnings of this vehicle and the transmission, are they the same as what was in the last model? Yeah, they carry over from the Mod Air 17 vehicle. We have a 7-speed AT and the rest of the suspension is the same. The one thing that I do want to point out is though that the tires were actually retuned. The sidewalls were actually softened just a bit to give that uh, ride comfort quality improvement. So we did damper tuning, we did tire tuning, and now out of a full-size SUV that is a body-on-frame vehicle, you get a really quality, comfortable ride. Everybody in the vehicle has a comfortable, quiet ride. Anand Patel is with us. We're talking to him about the uh, upgrades and updates to the 2018 QX80. We're in South Carolina on the beach. When our auto expert returns, there's a lot going on the inside of this vehicle. We'll find out what that is next. Here's some predictions for 2018. We always like to predict the future on ourautoexpert.com. What's going to happen in 2018? You're going to see a lot of new advertising for autonomous cars. Plus, you're also going to see the windshield space on the inside of your car start to be used for information. That's just for the driver. If you're a passenger, front or back seat, you may start to see movies and things like that projected onto the screens inside of cars. It's using real estate, which already exists, to project the future. That's some of the things you'll start to see happening on the inside of your car, as predicted by the whole team at OurAutoExpert.com. Stay tuned. There's more to come with Nick Miles on Como News. All these horses in my car got me going fast. It's our auto expert on Como News. Here's more with Nick Miles. Welcome back to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles. You can find everything you want to know about cars, trucks, and SUVs at ourautoexpert.com. And we are with Anand Patel. He is the guy who knows everything about the interior, exterior, redesign, all the product of the 2018 Infinity QX80. Now, the inside, and my other half always tells me, it doesn't really matter how everything on the outside looks because I spend all my time on the inside of a vehicle. So the inside is where most customers are going to spend the majority of their time. This is where you have made an absolute outstanding luxury piece of material. Very much, I might say, like an Englishman's club or, you know, a boat. And those are some of the inspirations you took, right? You took inspirations from a boat to make the interior of this vehicle. The interior has been refined, uh, Nick, and we, we actually find our inspiration from luxury jets. We want that 
that environment and that experience within the vehicle. So for 2018, we've made some enhancements on the interior, starting with the design. We have additional quilting and stitching piping inside the vehicle to make it really look outstanding. Very top notch in terms of quality. semi aniline leather is available. It's a buttery smooth leather. Feels great to the touch. And then on the inside, we also have new color options. We have a new color called Saddle Brown, and this complements the graphite and the wheat that we have before. Something in the middle that's not too dark or not too light, and it's a trending color, so we're really excited to, to offer this new color. Paired with those interiors is our actually new uh, trim colors. We have a charcoal burl that's paired with the Saddle Brown and the wheat, and we have a new espresso burl trim that's paired with the graphite interior. There's a lot yeah. going on on the inside of this vehicle. It looks super complicated because you have heated and cooled seats up front, and that means the seats have to be perforated because with leather, you don't get the heat or the cool if they're not perforated. So now you have quilted, you have high quality leather, and you have perforated. But on top of all that, you have some new stain resistant technology as well. Yeah, our designers and our engineers noticed, you know, feedback from the consumer. This car has been in market for several years, and its appeal is for young families. And those families have young kids, and they can ruin the interior of your car. So what they, the engineers and designers did is they found a solution to prevent stain resistance or to allow stain resistance and prevent those seats from looking aged within the first few months of ownership. Dye transfer from jeans is another one you see, especially on the light color interiors. So that new coating is there to make it easier for the consumer to maintain their vehicle and also to prevent that wear and tear from showing up for, for several years. So I never even thought about that. You know, you have black jeans and then you have a white seat and it tends to be just the edges of the seat where the jeans you rub in as you get in and get out, just that color gets a little gray over time, right? That seems to me that the car would now look the same if you've managed to get rid of that and presumably it's high quality leather which we've talked about it will look the same on those seats in five years time was that the goal is to not see the wear and tear on those seats absolutely we wanted to make sure those customers appreciate the interior design for as long as they own the car and and this is one one step to allow that ha- to happen now this is one of the most spacious vehicles on the market three rows plenty of room i see in the video that you presented today or the video that was shown the marketing video there are full size six foot tall adults in the third row now there are plenty of car companies that say hey we build this our engineer was this high and he got into the back and we did this for 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 a reason but i i saw you guys put big adults in the back can i ride more than just to the restaurant and back in this is this a long journey third row you know the third row is always seen as sort of that penalty box and the qx80 is a full-size vehicle we wanted to take advantage of the space in the third row section so we do allow six or seven passengers in that vehicle to sit reasonably comfortable the third row is always a little bit different because it's above the rear axle so the you know the legroom can be a little tight but in this vehicle you definitely can fit those adults they can go for a trip and hopefully they're satisfied along the way getting in and out was always a challenge Uh, did infinity make that easier the ingress and egress in that third row there's one lever at the uh the upper shoulder level of the seat and you just grab that and flip it down it folds and tumbles in one motion to make it easy to get into that third row and the third row itself is a power seat so if you want to add additional cargo space if you need to haul stuff you can easily push some buttons in the cargo area to fold those seats down and lift them back up when you need to. Especially for someone like me who doesn't have very long arms, if I need to sort of lean in the back of a Vic, I always have to like climb up and, and you know, just get in the back and then flatten the seats down. So to have a button that's absolutely perfectly convenient. Let's talk a little bit about some of the electronic systems, uh, Anand, mm-hmm. in this vehicle. We, uh, we've dri- I've driven the QX80, I spent the day in it, and I tested this out and it's kind of impressive. So we've seen adaptive cruise control where you have a set speed and a set distance behind the vehicle in front. So let's say you're traveling behind a vehicle it slows down your car's going to automatically slow down maintaining that distance that you've preset behind it but you have a way to do that outside of cruise control where it doesn't let me get too close to the vehicle in front how does that work basically Nick it uses the same radar technology that's in the vehicle for the intelligent cruise control we call it distance control assist and it's one more way of having that customer have a good experience if they're stuck in stop and go traffic they can enable the distance control assist and it will automatically accelerate and brake for you without you having to set a a max speed. And that way it will help me not running into the guy in front when I'm not paying attention? Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Which is always good because we hate to have to play those insurance claims, right? And then you have, you know, the the big screen, you have standard navigation. But the one thing that we hear is missing is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto from this vehicle. Seems like it might be, that might be a a penalty against you? Well, we found that, um, you know, that's not a major reject reason for, for our consumers. We do have standard navigation. It comes with the car. So every car has Navi. We have a service, our in touch services that cover quite a bit of connectivity with your with your personal device. So we find that this these things can be overcome. 
CarPlay and Android Auto are certainly trending technologies. Everybody would love to use their phone. We try to make it a little more uh, integrated with our standard Navi system. You can use our voice commands and our controls to set your destination. But yeah, other than that, yeah, today we don't have a, a CarPlay and Android Auto. Excellent. Thank you for talking to us. I will round up everything that we've uh, talked about in the QX80 in the next segment. And then in the next hour of our Auto Expert, I'm going to make it all the way over to Orange County in California, and we're going to drive from Orange County all the way to San Francisco. You got that in the second hour. But when we come back, we'll round up the QX80 and tell you where you can get one, how much it's going to cost, and whether it should be on your shopping list for this season. I'm Nick Miles. This time of year is the best time of year to buy a vehicle. You can get between 20 and 25% off a new vehicle. Shop prices on the internet. Check your zip code online for the best discounts. Make sure you use your recent graduate or veterans discount if they're available and negotiate your price up front before you head to the dealership. Those are some of the tips on how to get the best deals this time of year. And again, it's the best time of year for car shopping. Keep your radio tuned to Como News. More Our Auto Expert is on the way. Como News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is Our Auto Expert. Here's Nick Miles. Welcome back to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. Hope you enjoyed our review and drive and discussion with the guys that are bringing the 2018 Infiniti QX80 to market. Now, don't forget the starting price is just under $65,000, around $64,750. It'll do 14 miles a gallon in the city, 20 on the highway, and tow 8,500 pounds. And if you're lucky enough, it'll be arriving in dealerships in the next few months or so. If you want the all-wheel drive version, that is $67,850 starting price. One of the largest third-row SUVs on the market, and the refreshes that they have done to it for 2018 are outstanding. When we continue on our auto expert, I will be talking to a travel blogger, and she will tell us exactly how to pack for a road trip and some of the tips and tricks if you're going to be taking a road trip in the next few months. Plus, we will be in California, traveling the entire length of Orange County to San Francisco in the brand new Kia Nia hybrid plug-in version of the vehicle. And we'll give you lots of tips and tricks on how to make sure you can get your vehicle charged if it's electric on the way through California. That's coming up next on Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. Keep listening. Nick Miles, our auto expert, is moments away on Como News 1000, FM 97.7. Charge your engines, and they're off. Back to our auto expert, Nick Miles. This is Como News. Welcome back to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles. Now, Kia invited me on a road trip, and they said, how would you like to drive the brand new Kia Nero hybrid, plug-in hybrid, that is, all the way from Orange County up to San Francisco in a three-day trial? So, of course, I jumped at the fact because the chances of me doing this on my own are pretty slim. I tend to travel so much, and I have so much to to do as far as work is concerned. But the other benefit to this trip was I have got to pair with a mummy blogger. Her name is Megan Riston, and Megan does travel blogging all around the world. You get to take your kids all over the world, Singapore, China, Hawaii. Where, where, where are some of the coolest places you have been with your kids? Singapore was awesome. That was My oldest child loves Singapore. Italy, Germany was amazing. London, Honduras was incredible. I took him down there and lived for six weeks. Isn't that a little scary? Isn't Honduras a scary place to visit? It's interesting that you would ask that. So that is considered to be one of the top most dangerous places in the world. And we were there in 2011. And when I flew the kids down there, I was alone. I flew down there with my three kids. I was very nervous because the city, San Pedro Sula, where we were flying into, was like either the second or third most dangerous city in the world. And at the time, like the number one most dangerous city in the world was in Afghanistan and because we were at war. So I was very nervous. I was very scared. Like as we were going through customs, I just thought 
please let our, our the person that's supposed to be picking us up, please let them be on the other side of the doors. You can't see until you get all the way through customs whether or not you're being picked up or not. And honestly, it was totally fine. I was nervous. We never had one incident the entire time we were there for six weeks. We traveled all over the country and did all kinds of awesome stuff. I love it. I, re- I would highly recommend it. Did you drive while you were in Honduras? We did do some driving. It's If you've ever been to Jamaica, it's a little bit like that. Their infrastructure is getting better all the time and they do recognize that they are a tourist destination, that they can become a leading tourist destination. So they are working on roads, but I tell you what, some of them are pretty bad. There's not a whole lot of rules. You know, a, a very short trip can take hours because it's it's intense. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about road trips. We're on this Kia road trip. We're in a car, a brand new Kia Nero plug-in hybrid, and we're driving from Orange County all the way up to San Francisco. When we pack for a road trip, when we prep for a road trip, give me some tips about things we should do. Well, let's see, some road trip packing tips? Yeah, just tell me how you would prep for a road trip. So the way I get ready for a road trip is, I mean, you got to check the weather. You got to see where you're going. That's how you want to dress. So dress in layers because like we're in California right now and in the morning it dropped into the 30s. But during the day, yesterday when we were in Orange County, it was 80 degrees outside. You don't necessarily want to pack a whole variety of outfits because you don't want to overpack and have to lug a bunch of stuff like you do. But... (laughs) That was a stab at me, by the way. <laughs> He's an overpacker. And so instead, just bring layers. So I have a pair of jeans and a short sleeve shirt for when it's hot. But then I've got a couple of cardigans. So when it gets cold, I can wrap up. Now, you you wear knee, uh, sorry, knee-high boots all the time. Is that something I should do? I mean, you're British, so probably. <laughs> uh, what about what about prepping for the road trip with the car? What are some sort of things that you want to put in the car? Now, some of that depends on the age of the car. But there are certain things I keep in my car all the time. I always think you should have a... A, a safety kit, like an emergency roadside assistance kit. I mean, you don't want to get in a situation and not have a flashlight. There was a road trip in California. I was with my oldest child at the time. He was less than two years old, and we ended up in an Alaskan winter storm. I can't remember what they called it, but it was really bad. We sat for hours and hours on the highway, and luckily I had a blanket in the car, so if you know that you're going to be going through mountain passes or s- severe weather, you need to have some blankets in the car just in case, because it did finally get to the point where we needed to turn off the car to save gas because I no longer knew how long we were going to be stuck out there. So I had blankets. Luckily, I had snacks. Water is always a good idea to stay hydrated. Now, if you have kids, you don't want them to just be sucking down one drink after another because then you're going to have to stop every five minutes so they can use the bathroom. But it's important to stay hydrated anytime you're traveling. And then what about, uh, you know, do you go crazy? Do you have uh, MRE rations in the car? No, I don't. But it's funny that you'd say that. I do have, um, I probably have seven power bars is packed with me right now. I'm starving. You are? Do you want a power bar? (laughs) That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to eat a power bar, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, brand new Kia Nero and some of the experiences that we've had on our road trip and some cool things to visit if you decide you want to drive from Orange County to San Francisco. You're listening to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles. Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Our auto expert with Nick Miles will be right back. Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Jump right in and put the pedal to the floor. Our auto expert with Nick Miles continues. Welcome back to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. You can find more from Our Auto Expert at ourautoexpert.com where you'll find out about the latest cars, trucks, and SUVs. We are in an SUV, a plug-in hybrid SUV. It is the Kia Nero, new for 2018. We're driving it all the way from Orange County in California up through Los Angeles, going north to San Francisco. Uh, right now, I am sitting with mommy blogger and travel blogger Megan Riston, and we are talking about this vehicle. Megan, this is the newest addition to the Kia Hybrid EV lineup. 2018, the hybrid electric vehicles get expanded. It is an interesting vehicle because not many SUVs are plug-in hybrids, but I've actually enjoyed driving this vehicle. We have been charging it, and we were given a competition by a uh, charge point who is providing the power for these vehicles and by Kia and they said you will get a thousand points if you charge the vehicle and for every time you charge the vehicle they didn't say you had to do a full charge so how many charges have we visited Megan? At least 18. Yes. <laughs> That's 18,000 points in the competition that we have just gained. Thank you charge point. Thank you Kia. We intend to win and we will win a whole bunch of harm and uh, entertainment gear if the competition is ours. Now let's get back a little bit to the vehicle. Your thoughts on driving this. We've done 380 
39 miles. We're averaging about 45.5 miles a gallon, and we've been in the car about nine hours. How is your backside? My back is pretty good. The reason he's asking that is because I have a bad back, and I can't stand to drive a car that doesn't have lumbar support. This car does have a lumbar support in the driver's seat. It does not in the passenger seat, which is kind of a bummer, but... So you, so you prefer to drive? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. We uh, <laughs> we actually can only do 91 miles. We've, we've we pretty much drained the gas tank. We're almost at... Uh, initially, we had 500 miles. I think we could have got it out of the car, but we're uh, we're down to about 90 miles to go. And we have 96... We have 96 miles till we get to our destination, and it says we're going to run down on 91. But luckily, we're going... There's road construction, so we're going really slow right now, so it's charging itself right now. Uh, we've been through Salinas. We stayed last night at a very interesting hotel called the Madonna in uh, in California. That was... Uh, it has special? multiple theme rooms. I thought it was really special. It was a special <laughs> place to stay. It was... Um, Pinked out, it's pink everywhere. Yeah, it was a, it was a little gaudy. It was kind of strange. But we've enjoyed driving this car. Let's talk about room for the family. Surprisingly, this is a pretty good sized car considering that it's, well, it's a eight. compact SUV, right? Yeah. So typically, I would not necessarily look at a compact SUV hybrid because it would be too small. Like the Prius Prime, there's no way I would buy that because it doesn't have a middle seat in the back, so it only seats four people, and it's just tiny. This is much bigger, so you can get the same kind of gas mileage except you can fit five people in here you could definitely put two car seats in the back row you might could even fit three car seats back there so interesting enough although the prius prime is not an suv the prius prime is actually uh the same size of this uh as, as vehicle although this this is an suv and that isn't an suv uh, the interior space is pretty similar but they've done a good job of organizing the interior space with lots of extra cubbies lots of door pockets places to put yourself phone and also in the back the seats fold flat which really helps because of the large amount of luggage you brought you mean the luggage you brought oh, yeah so the I large have, amount of I luggage have one I piece brought. of luggage and you have three pieces of luggage oh wow you're really outing me now aren't you <laughs> so let's talk about driving how do you feel with driving this how does it corner how does it accelerate well you've seen my driving it's horrible and you know I cut off all those people trying to get on the freeway and it handled super well. Um, it brakes super fast, which is very important. It does have regenerative braking, which is good. So it helps charge the battery when you brake. Yeah, so I'm probably charging the bejeebies out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it handles really well. Um, one thing is, though, when I was try when I got in the wrong exit lane and then I had to swerve back over to stay on the freeway and I really had to gun it, I had it floored all the way to the ground. It doesn't have a lot of get up and go. No, and it's only a small four-cylinder engine. That's one of the cool things things about it is so that small four-cylinder engine actually does help on fuel economy we have got an amazing fuel economy even though we're getting 45 miles a gallon now what have we got out of it what was the best we got out of it i believe we got up to 50.2 or was it 51.2 yeah 51.2 miles a gallon which is pretty amazing and so you you know if you use the electricity if you lose the charge and you use the gas at the same time you can actually get a high fuel economy well we just crossed 390 miles and we haven't gotten gas that's right and there's still, what, 89? 89 miles to go. Yeah. So we're going to hit almost 500 miles. Now, you've used the navigation system in here. Uh, how do you feel about that? Is it easy to use? Is the infotainment, is the media infota media system easy to use? Has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? I use an Android phone. You use an Apple phone. What's your experience been with this car? I like that it's been seamless. So I plugged it in, and it offered CarPlay right away. I didn't have to physically go in and change that, and I don't know if it's because I Bluetoothed my phone to it but it just it just did it which I really appreciate because too many buttons confuse me I like stuff to be easy <laughs> <laughs> me too I also I also like very much it's, it's very simple to find your way around there's major buttons for everything on the inside for the map for the navigation for setup the media and radio you just they're, they're simple buttons that list off what you need and you can just press that button and get to it as well and there's uh, two charging ports for USB and then there's two uh, 12 volt charging ports which were the old style cigarette red lighter charging ports as well. Let's talk about your experience with the charging stations because we did have a little snafu early on when we had trouble getting the uh, the charger out of the vehicle. So I have never used a public charging port. The only time I have charged a vehicle is at my own home. So I was using the cable that came with the car and just plugging it and unplugging it. No big deal. But what I found out is that there are charging ports 
all over the state of California and you can find one on the app that we've been using the charge point app and you drive up and they had they have a cable so in my mind I thought when we pulled up we're gonna have to get the cable out of the back hook it up no, none of that the cables ready to go all you have to do is plug it in well what I didn't realize is that it, it has like a safety feature essentially so somebody can't unplug it only you can unplug it except I couldn't figure out how to unplug it so once it's hooked in I'm just like I'm pressing the button I'm pressing the button I'm it, it was almost like a cartoon to watch you because she had both feet on the fender of the car and she was pulling on this and this charge board couldn't get it off that's a slight exaggeration I only had one foot <laughs> and it was probably on the tire but it looked very cartoonish. and Nick never intervened he pretended like he did not know what to do and it got to the point where I finally broke down and called the guy I know at Kia and asked him how to get the thing unplugged and he's like just unlock the car Megan lock it and unlock it and boom it, un- it unlocked Megan Riston you're a travel blogger uh, you talk about travel and road trips uh, tell people where they can find more information out about you they can find me at www.mommytravels.net where I cover family travel and life in between trips Excellent. Megan, thanks for joining us. When our auto expert returns, we'll talk to the guys that have designed and brought the Kia Nero to market and the plug-in version of this car. We'll also talk to ChargePoint and find out how they're trying to electrify America so those people that choose to have a zero-emission green vehicle can make sure there's power available constantly throughout their travels. You're listening to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles. What were some of the best cars that we tested in 2017? Well, the Toyota CHR was definitely at the top of our list, as was the Jaguar F-Type SVR. We also tested the Kia Soul Turbo, which got a home run, along with Honda's Ridgeline truck. And some of the best cars, trucks, and SUVs can be found at our website, ourautoexpert.com. Homo News 1000 FM 97.7. Our auto expert with Nick Miles will be right back. I'm with you. Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Jump right in and put the pedal to the floor. Our auto expert with Nick Miles continues. Welcome back to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. As we come towards the end of the year and the beginning of 2018, we wanted to take a look at some of the best deals you can get out there in the car world. And at this time of year is when dealers are trying to sell off their vehicles and get rid of their 2017 models and get 2018 models into people's uh, dealerships so you can buy the freshest cars. That means you can get great deals on the 2017s. But at the same time, everybody wants those records sales figures coming towards the end of the year so they're looking for good deals to sell them on big incentives between 20 and 25 percent and what are some of those best deals well i have been driving the kia nero now kia are offering some great deals on the nero it comes in either a plug-in or a plug-in hybrid version this vehicle is a very sound electric vehicle you can get incentives across the united states on the vehicle especially in the northwest it'll do around 25 miles on electricity alone which is kind of a good deal for EPA one of the cool things about this vehicle is uh, Kia are offering some incentives this year it actually starts in the low 20s but your Kia dealer offering incentives on it right now if you want something a little bit more sporty I've been also test driving the Alfa Romeo Stelvio now the Alfa Romeo Stelvio named after the Stelvio Pass recently it got the fastest time on the Nürburgring for a production SUV and there are lease deals going on right now at Alfa Romeo for around $399 a month with around $3,000 down on the Stelvia. The Camry is being offered for around $189 a month on a lease plan right now with around $3,000 down. And the whole idea of the Camry is the best-selling sedan in North America and it has been for the last 15 years. If you're looking for something a little more performance-oriented, you could actually actually go look at the new Mustang. Now, I was blown away by this brand new 2018 Mustang. Some of the features in it are crazy cool, including the fact that it has uh, an exhaust button on it, which allows you to set the exhaust to super loud or to super quiet. It actually opens pipes all the way to the front of the vehicle to increase the sound. It also has for 2018 new digital display on the inside, a new front on the outside, a new 
back on the outside and just in time for the Star Wars movie it actually has a new hood which was inspired by Darth Vader's helmet. Now who doesn't want something so cool as that? The new Mustang is uh, got some great pricing in dealers right now and of course a great performance package as well. Uh, one of the vehicles that I think is probably one of the most outstanding available for 2018 is the Chevy Cruze Diesel. Now the Chevy Cruze Diesel gets incredible fuel economy, has what they call a whisper quiet engine at Chevy and is I guess one of those vehicles that is you'd consider an entry level vehicle as well. On top of the Chevy Cruze Diesel you can actually get a massive incentives off of the Chevy Silverado. Now for 2017 the 15 Crew Cab is a really good deal and you can get up to $11,005 off the vehicle. That's $4,755 off the employee discount for everybody. $3,500 off the total cash allowance. $2,000 trade-in assistance and $750 off the options package discount. Add that all together and you're looking at a massive discount for the new Chevy Silverado. Those are some of the discounts we're going to get this season. All brought to you by your team here at OurAutoExpert.com. I'm Nick Miles. Como News 1000 FM 97.7. Jump right in and put the pedal to the floor. Our Auto Expert with Nick Miles continues. Welcome back to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles and a chance to look forward to what is going to be happening at the Detroit show, better known as the North American International Auto Show. Chevrolet spokesman Shad Mulch is joining me on the phone. Shad, you guys kind of uh, let the cat out of the bag in Texas a little while back, showing off the new Silverado, but we didn't really get to see it up close and personal. So what's the story? We did indeed. So yeah, this uh, 2018 marks the 100 year anniversary of Chevrolet trucks, the Chevrolet Silverado. And we've, we've been celebrating in a big and appropriate way. And uh, last week in Texas, we were there with a bunch of Silverado legend owners and a whole bunch of old vintage trucks on display. And it was basically a big party, a celebration for Chevy. And then uh, we had a you know a group of media there as well, and we had a, we flew in via helicopter, uh, a very quick landing of a the 2019 Silverado. So this is the next generation Silverado, completely new, completely redesigned. We dropped it behind the stage, had a driver bring it up onto the stage. Uh, just long enough for people to whip out their phones and cameras and snap a couple pics, and then we drove it off. So it was it was intended as a sneak peek, and that's exactly what it was. I'd just like to call Chevy a big tease. That's what I'd like to call you. Um, <laughs> it, it's going to be revealed for people to touch, feel, play, smell at the uh, North American show. And was this was this scheduled? Uh, like I, I didn't see this happening this year. I thought it would happen next year, but I guess I kind of miscalculated because there's a hundred years. Yeah. So it was the reveal or the sneak peek was uh, was planned as a as a surprise for the owners, and then to bring it and show it in more detail at the North American Auto Show next month. Uh, was part of our plan. You know, we don't talk too much about our scheduling for competitive reasons, but it makes sense when you do, when you look at sort of the, the production run of the current generation and, uh, you know, when we start wanting to get the new, the new product out into the market. So, yeah, the timing is perfect for us. One question, and you may avoid this because uh, being a PR guy, you're pretty good at this, but what can you tell me about the truck? I wish that my pay grade allowed me to talk about future products. I do. I can tell you that <laughs> there is a Trail Boss variant because that's what we showed to the to the owners in Texas last week, but that's about it. Okay, so we'll have to wait a few more days to find out about that. Let's bounce to the other end of the scale, Shad, and talk about Bolt EV. Uh, it's a year. It's a year since this vehicle uh, went on sale. It, it was the North American car of the year. It had big accolades already in its first year. Uh, is that continuing? Is the public as enthusiastic about it as they were 12 months ago? Uh, more so, in fact. The sales every month have grown pretty dramatically. In fact, in November, I don't have December's t- totals yet, but in November we sold 2,987, so just under 3,000. 
And in total so far, when we, we did the first delivery December 10th up in uh, the Bay Area in California, we've sold to date 20,649. And that's a lot of electric cars. I think it's more than a lot of people anticipated. And if you recall, we sold them in just a couple of markets at launch, and then we expanded nationwide. And we did that a little bit earlier than anticipated. We just got everything done quicker than, than we thought. And so that helped. You know, getting the car available nationwide has really led to the success and the, the higher sales volume. Than, than I think what a lot of people expected. There's one thing Chevy know how to do, and that's win and win the public over and also uh, win awards. Last question for you before we go to break. What are we going to be looking for in Detroit? Is there a- anything we should be focusing on the next year? Well, definitely the, the Silverado, uh, the, the full-size pickup truck. That'll be um, front and center for us in Detroit. And then our uh, our Colorado ZR2, that's our, our specially designed off-road capable mid-size pickup truck, is up for North American Car of the Year. So we're very honored to be nominated and to be in the final running for that. And that'll be announced, as you know, in the first week of the Detroit Auto Show. Yeah, I think the 15th, uh, 7.30 a.m., uh, if anybody's interested, but that's uh, Eastern Standard Time. 7.30 a.m. will be the announcement on the 15th. I will tell you, when I look at the lineup, I think it's up against the Lincoln Navigator Navigator and the Ford Expedition. Definitely my favorite, I think, out of that is that uh, the variant of the Colorado. I think that has the best chance of winning. It also happens to be the only real truck that is up for the award. The other two are SUVs. So good luck with that, Shad. And uh, I'm going to leave it there with you. You can find out more, of course, at uh, Chevrolet's website. And of course, by listening and watching and going online for OurAutoExpert.com. I'm Nick Myers. Stay tuned. There's more to come with Nick Miles on Como News. It's our auto expert on Como News. Here's more with Nick Miles. Welcome back to our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles, and we are joined on the phone by Anton Warman. Uh, he is an independent analyst and investor. He's been on the show before. We tend to talk a lot about electric cars and especially Tesla. Uh, Anton has an expertise in this field. So, Anton, let's summarize the last year with Tesla and start off with the Model 3. Now, this vehicle has really only risen to about 60% of the promised capacity from Tesla. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that we don't know precisely what the problem is. Tesla has identified one particular issue that they identified back a couple of months ago in which they said that the um, battery module production in Nevada basically did not proceed uh, at the pace that it was supposed to. They also said that that was the primary reason for production not moving along any faster. So you can surmise that there are other issues, but they weren't uh, at all specific about what those issues were. Remember, initially, Tesla said that they were going to produce between 100,000 and 200,000 Model 3s in the second half of 2017. Then they retreated to saying 20,000 cars in the fourth quarter, the quarter that is ending here at the end of December. And then they said 5,000 units in the last week of December. And then when they fell short of that, or were going to fall short of that, they said 5,000 units by the end of March, this upcoming March. So, they have delivered how many so far in total? They have officially acknowledged 222 units by the end of September. The unofficial estimates by the best outside parties said they delivered 145 units in October and 345 units in November. And there is not yet any good estimate for the month of December. So we're waiting for that to come out here on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever it is, the 3rd of January, when we're going to get a number for December. I was driving from Orange County up to San Francisco the other day and saw a truck full of Model 3s go past me. It it probably was the only truck full of Model 3s that has seen the highway there uh, in the 101 in some time. How does this bode for the new Roadster and the truck which they recently announced? Well, the new Roadster there is years out. I mean, they said first deliveries in 2020. They haven't even identified where they're going to build this vehicle. So I think that at that, you know, this is Stefan is so far away. It's a car that is going to 
start at $200,000 and the initial configuration is $250,000. So this will be obviously a very low volume vehicle. When it comes to the semi-truck, it is supposed to hit in 2019. Of course, you're talking about a much larger production facility that will be needed for that simply because the vehicle itself is very large and they haven't identified where they're going to build that either. So potentially, uh, where, where could these factories be built? The production lines for the semi-truck as well as for the sports car roadster could be made inside the gigafactory outside of Reno, Nevada, because that is simply such a large facility with so much square footage yet to be built, as well as already built, but not yet utilized, that you could imagine fitting them there. But the company has not acknowledged either. So what's the future of Tesla now? They're looking for more money to service some of their debt. They have these products, which are many years out for production. They have failed by quite a large number producing the Model 3. They seem to have a lot of problems, yet they are also the talk of the town and this enthusiasts are still crazy about them. That's right. So the fundamental issue with a company, it's a margin issue. It's a profitability issue because right now the company is losing over $20,000 per vehicle sold and they have about $117 million per quarter in interest expense. And this is going up for at least two reasons. First of all, the size of their debt is increasing and the interest rates, generally speaking for them, have been moving upwards or are in the process of moving upwards a little bit. So basically, uh, last quarter, that amounted to about $4,500 per vehicle in just interest expense on their debt. And if you look at an average selling price going forward when the Model 3 has ramped up in volume, we might be looking at an average price per Tesla vehicle of say $60,000. You look at a Model 3, which, which is going to have a base price of as little as $35,000. And then you look at Model S and Model X and the Roadster that will be selling upwards of you know $100,000 and, and in some cases much above that. Now, if they managed a 7.5% profit margin before interest expense, that is basically $4,500 per vehicle. And at $4,500 per vehicle interest expense, that is their break-even point. So, you know, you sell cars for an average price of $60,000 you earn 7.5% before interest expense, and then that pays only for the interest of on, on their on their debt. So they need to get their numbers above those. So they need to get above about a 7.5% margin before interest. And right now, of course, that margin percentage is in the red. It's negative. Anton, it's always a pleasure for you to join us, and we, we really enjoy having your insight into what's going on in the world of electric vehicles and also uh, finance and investment. Uh, you're listening to our our auto expert, that is Anton Wallman, and he is an independent investor and analyst. And you now know what really is going on behind the scenes at Tesla. Keep your radio tuned to Como News. More Our Auto Expert is on the way. Here are some ways to make sure your car can survive the winter. Make sure you constantly check your tires. If they don't have enough tread on them, you could be trying to dig out of the snow in very slippery tires. If you've had a bad winter this year, we want to make sure that your car survives that. And that means checking the battery and terminals. There's nothing like coming out and it's cold outside and not being able to start your vehicle. Sometimes there is gunk that builds up around the terminals. Make sure that your car can survive the winter by keeping the battery healthy. Also check your oil. Some vehicles require different viscosity in the colder weather. That might be your car and you may have dangers of your engine not working properly if the oil isn't checked. Also check your coolant to make sure the car can be warm or cooled. Check your wiper blades. You want those windshields cleared if the snow falls and also that washer fluid. Make sure you can clean your windshield and it's clean throughout the whole winter season and remove the snow from your your car. It's not just you you have to worry about, but other people on the road. Those are your winter tips this year. Come. 
Como News. Time to set it on cruise control. This is Our Auto Expert. Here's Nick Miles. Thanks for listening to Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. As we enter the end of this show, wanted to recap the cars that could be chosen for North American Car of the Year. It's going to be chosen on January the 15th. The finalists uh, include for Car of the Year, the Toyota Camry, which have been around for 15 years as the number one seller in the United States. But the favorite is the Honda Accord with a brand new, very top of the line engine and a transmission that most people who have driven it say is the most outstanding. Now, my favorite for Car of the Year is the Kia Stinger. I just drove the GT and it's absolutely out of this world. For Truck of the Year, the favorite is the Chevy Colorado ZR2, which is an outstanding vehicle, but I think it's also up against some pretty stiff competition, which includes the Ford Expedition, which is new for 2018, along with the Lincoln Navigator. Those are the vehicles which could be named the car and truck of the year. We'll be back again with a new show next week here on Our Auto Expert. I'm Nick Miles. Keep listening. Nick Miles, our auto expert, is moments away on Como News 1000, FM 97.7. After the lonely nights I pray so.